in researching my new book, I talked to a lot of hairdressers. And during the pandemic, there was a baby boom among the, these hairdressers. They lived in New York City. And why was there a baby boom? Well, prior to the pandemic, they were using a lot of um, hair styling products that contain chemicals called quaternium compounds. And quaternium compounds cut fertility really badly. I show why. Well, once they stopped working with all these compounds with their clients because of the pandemic and because salons were shutting down and they stopped their exposures, all of these uh, hairdressers started having babies again. I write about it. And it was a simple exposure to the products that, they, that, they, that we use every day in our cosmetics and personal care. Particularly of concern are those for people with kinky hair, persons of color, um, because hair straighteners tend to contain a lot of these quat compounds. And um, so I show you what, what's safe in raising healthy kids. We're bringing up so many issues, you, people can start to say, well, okay, it's really bad. I'm just going to go in my cave and uh, forget about it. But actually, it's, it's, all of this is all manageable. You, you can do a quick read of the, my book, and you're equipped for life. It's really, really manageable. We need it. Because our society's future is at stake. It's not small stuff. It's one of those things where people think it's alarmist when you say society is at stake. I don't think it's alarmist at all. And I see a lot in the news about people worrying about carbon in the atmosphere. And that's a 60 or 100 year problem. And we'll run out of topsoil before we really face all of the carbon problems. But who cares about the environmental effects of carbon if you're not going to stop the pesticides that are destroying life. It's not just humans. It's all the animals and bugs and stuff too. If you don't stop that now, do not talk to me about carbon. Carbon's an issue. It's just a distraction from these incredibly toxic compounds that are found more in the U.S. than in most of the rest of the world. Why are there so many of these things in the U.S. versus Europe? You know, one of the things about the, the climate movement, which I totally support, by the way, um, is it's kind of working from a scientific top-down basis. And what I'm doing in the anti-toxic movement is empowering people to make those decisions in their shopping that will have the impact of getting rid of these pesticides, for example. And David, we've made huge progress. So um, my second big tip, you were asking about how to avoid pesticides filtering your water is the first one. Second one is bioorganic foods. And, and I want to fill people with hope here. You know, when I wrote Diet for a Poison Planet, there was no organic market. There was no federal organic certification. There were no organic foods available at supermarkets. So I had to look at every food and show you which were the least toxic and the most toxic. But the beautiful thing that has happened in the last 30 years, thanks to shoppers who have uh, made the choice to demand safer foods, and now we, that we have an organic certification program, both on the federal and state level, is that organic food prices have gone way down. 